Dream Talk Show, Health Matters, with your lovely host, Ugo Nano CK. On this show, we will be interviewing doctors, pharmacists, nurse practitioners, dietitians, and many other health professionals. Thanks for watching. Hello, viewers. Welcome to the new talk show, Health Matters. I am your host, Ugo Nano CK. On this show, we will be discussing various health topics and we will be interviewing various health professionals. Today's topic, we will discuss high blood pressure. With me, I have an expert on high blood pressure. Please help me to welcome Dr. Linda Uhegu. Hello viewers, it's nice to meet you today and thank you for bringing me on the show. You're welcome, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. All right, Linda, so high blood pressure. It's um, very prevalent amongst African Americans and those of African descent. Um, why is that? Well, you know, there are other, there are many reasons why, and there are various scientists that will give you different answers. But I think for the most part, what people should realize is that there is one main factor, and that is genetics. If your mother, your dad, and you know, your grandparents had high blood pressure, there's a higher chance to see that you will also have high blood pressure. Other factors are your diet. People should also realize that any grain of salt that you take in will bring water in. So the more salt you add to already cooked food or eating more canned foods, you're bringing in an increased amount of salt that is in your natural diet. So there are various factors, but those are some of the most prevalent ones, genetics and your diet. Okay, good. So now that we're, we know what high blood pressure is, it's also inter interchangeable with hypertension. Absolutely. So what is hypertension? So doctors define regular, normal blood pressure as a blood pressure of 120 over 80. So anything less than 120 over 80 is normal blood pressure. So when you start going above that, you start to get into classifications of high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And being it interchangeable, you have your pre-hypertension, and then you have stage one high blood pressure and stage two. These are very important classifications and the numbers do matter. And the reason the numbers matter is because depending on the numbers, you're either going to start medication or not. So the first step is always going to, going for your regular physical checkup. That is always your number one. And that is going to get you your knowledge about any condition that you have so it can be properly assessed and treated. Okay, good. You know, when you say going for your normal physicals and things like that, I noticed that a lot of my friends and family members who look good like you, like you don't really look like you have any health issues, you're a good size, you're vibrant, you go to work every day. So people like you and other people who have good physique, sometimes they don't think to go every year or however often you're supposed to get a physical. Absolutely. How often are you supposed to get a physical? At minimum, mm -hmm. you should have a, a yearly physical. Okay. And even if I am small, I could have a history, a family history that puts me at a high risk. And so with that high risk, just as if you think about pregnancy, if your parents had premature um, labor, your mom had premature labor, you have a high risk of having it. Okay. So if your mom has high blood pressure, now you have to think about you also have a high risk of having it. So an annual physical, meaning once a year, Having a physical is very helpful, okay. and it's all about <coughs> gaining knowledge. So when you go for your physical, they will check those things, and if there's a concern, they will bring you back sooner than your yearly physical, and that is what is important. Okay. So remember, guys, go for your yearly physical. It's very important. Absolutely. Okay. So um, did you already discuss how doctors, how do they diagnose the hypertension or the high blood pressure? Well, like I said before, once mm -hmm. you go for your annual physical, they'll check. They'll check with a blood pressure cuff. They'll put it on your arm. They'll have you seated in a seated position. And they will determine based on your blood pressure if it is actually elevated above the normal blood pressure. Mm -hmm. If it is actually elevated, then what will happen is that they will come bring you back to the clinic. And after two evaluations in the clinic setting, and if you have a higher than normal blood pressure, it is considered high blood pressure, interchangeable with hypertension. Mm -hmm. And so that's generally how us doctors will determine that you have high blood pressure. Okay, so I know there's stage one, 
right. and stage two. So stage one of high blood pressure, you have to kind of define it in a sense. It's three classifications. So the first stage generally is anything above 139, the top number, and anything above 89, the bottom number, will generally give you stage one. When you get to a blood pressure of 160 over 100, meaning the top number being 160 or the bottom number being 100, you're classified as stage two. When we look at stage one high blood pressure, you have to think about, can I change my circumstances? Mm -hmm. Can I change my diet? Can I change my lifestyle? Do I smoke? Do I, am I very inactive? Can I start becoming more active and helping my body? Can I lose weight? Those are the things that you can consider when they, call, when they say lifestyle modifications. And with those things, you don't necessarily need medication, mm -hmm. but you can only consider doing lifestyle modifications in stage one. By the time you progress to stage two high blood pressure, there's absolutely a need for medication. And that's what I think people don't realize. Medication is not a forever thing. If you can change your lifestyle in some ways, then you can definitely own, try to wean yourself off of medication mm -hmm. if you do it right. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so I heard about different kinds of medications. I've heard of like beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, diuretics. I've heard of those, you know, different kinds. I heard there's some that are uh, better in African, African people of African descent and then with other people of other descent. So which um, medicines, if somebody is diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure, uh, how do they know that they're getting the right medication from the pharmacist or their doctor? Well, the right medication is dependent on your doctor because your doctor knows what's going on with you. If you have high blood pressure by itself, you really can use any of those classes of medications that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. really you can. But let's say you have diabetes. Mm. That would now determine you actually need a specific wow. type of blood pressure medication mm -hmm. because it will help with the diabetes and the complications of diabetes and it will help with your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So those factors make a difference. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at, do I trust my doctor? That's your primary goal. Do I trust my doctor that they have my best interest at heart? And if you do, then you should trust that they will put you on the right medication that will benefit any condition that you have going on. And I think that's what's important. So now that you've gone into the, um, the maybe hypertension or high blood pressure being associated with certain diseases like diabetes, um, are there any other diseases that can come about um, because you have high blood pressure, you know? Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, we, we're talking about high blood pressure not because we just want to educate. Um, but in the education of people, we need to understand that there are a lot of complications that come from high blood pressure. And one of the main ones that we see in our, in our hospitals are strokes, mm -hmm. heart attacks, and kidney problems. Now, because you have high blood pressure doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. But having high blood pressure, especially high blood pressure that needs to be treated with medication, mm -hmm. puts you at a very high risk of having these complications. Meaning you could have a high blood pressure and if you're not taking care of it, you're not on medication or you're not going for your annual physical mm -hmm. then you could be at a higher risk of having a stroke you can be at high risk of having a heart attack. And you can be at high risk of having kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Kidney disease can lead to being on dialysis. Mm -hmm. And no one wants any of these conditions. No. Mm -hmm. But they're possible, especially when you know that there's a condition that you have that you're not taking care of. Mm -hmm. So all of these you know, have the risk at baseline of high blood pressure. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it's very, it's, it brings up um, something that happened to me. One person that I knew very closely had um, hypertension and they took it very lightly and it ended up um, affecting their kidneys. Wow. And their blood pressure was so high they almost had a stroke. Wow. So I feel like these can be silent killers. Um, you know, so many people, by the time it gets to the point where you have to go to the doctor, it's almost too late. 
Right. So this is really good information. It is good information. And you should be very careful to, to disregard what is not normal with your health. Mm -hmm. When you're walking down the street and you've been a person all your life that's never had a headache, and all of a sudden for a week you've just had the same naggy headache and it's not gone away, these are signs that this is not normal. Mm -hmm. And you should probably see your, your primary doctor. We take for granted our health. Mm -hmm. We are not invincible. Mm -hmm. We can really be affected, like you said, by silent killers, by things that will affect us. So high blood pressure is one of them. Mm -hmm. It can affect a lot of organs in your body without your knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's important to have your checkups. OK, so that's good. Now, I want you to reiterate. Um, in the beginning of our talk, you discussed how um, diet modifications can help. Sometimes if you catch hypertension or high blood pressure early, if you yes. modify your diet and your lifestyle, yes. you may not need to take any medication yes. and your body can get back to its normal. So what do you do if you have hypertension? For somebody that really needs a step-by-step -step guide on, okay, I was diagnosed, I have high blood pressure, I was diagnosed, what do I need to do now? Well, one thing that I know, even in my own household, even being a physician now, I still struggle by telling my parents they don't need so much salt. Okay. I think me and my mom now have an agreement mm -hmm. that she won't cook with so much salt if okay. I work out with her. Mm -hmm. So you have to, it, it's not a one person thing, it's a family thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to bring your family into this. Because if one person stops, then you get enticed by everything else around you. But if the family it makes a plan mm -hmm. to change their lifestyle, it can be more sustainable. Yes, and friends matter a lot. They do. Also workplace. Yes, mm -hmm. and you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. So when you get diagnosed with a condition, you have to determine what is your goal. Yes. Do you want to be able to get off of medication? Everybody should have their goal. Some people are not able to get off of medication, even mm -hmm. if they do make those lifestyle modifications. Oh, wow. But those lifestyle modifications do help. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is saying, I'm dedicated to the plan that I'm going to set up. Mm -hmm. You and your doctor sit down and devise the best plan for you. That plan may include taking salt out of your diet. That plan may include changing, eating so, so many starchy foods or foods that have high carbohydrates and saying that I'm going to eat more protein, I'm going to eat more vegetables, and adding that into your, your, your daily routine. Others may include, I would not start exercising unless you have gone through a physical mm -hmm. and talked to your doctor, but exercise is a big part of it as well. If you talk to your doctor and you say, I want to start exercising, and they give you the green light, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Start out very small. Don't be the person with a New Year's resolution and go to the gym and hurt yourself. Yes. Start out very slow, start out very small, start out one week at a time. Minimum of 40 minutes, three to five times a week, mm -hmm. you will start to see results. Okay. 40 minutes. Wow, 40 minutes. Three times a week. Three times a week minimum. 40 minutes. Okay, we can do that easily. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even at work, if you take your lunch break, you eat, you know, a light lunch, and you walk around your building of some sort, that is still increasing your heart rate, yeah. increasing the activity than just sitting down at your desk. Those things make a difference. That's very true. Okay, good. Well, another thing I wanted to highlight now, we're both Nigerians. Yes. And we know our culture. So I know you mentioned the starchy food, which to break it down for us who don't know what starchy food is, rice <laughs> is one of them, and pounded yam, Absolutely. Gary. Yes. Okay, so that's just to name a few. Puff puff, chin chin, all of that stuff is very high in starch. And then sometimes in sodium as well, depending on how you cook uh, your rice. Right. You know. mm -hmm. The salt in the food is very high. And I'm not saying that you should never eat what you've mm -hmm. grown up eating, all of the good Nigerian food that yeah. we love. I'm not saying that, but moderation is what I'm saying. Yeah. Everything in moderation is a plus. You, you can eat but be very cautious of how much you're eating. And if you're cooking your own food, be very cautious of what you're adding to flavor your food. 
those things are the ones that I'm saying, you know, you can do. And you mentioned, you know, you know, pounded jam. So I'm guessing that you're around the lines of fufu, right? Yes. So there are different ways of eating fufu. Mm -hmm. Even people eat oatmeal. That's and true. They make fufu. They make that. oatmeal fufu. So mm -hmm. there's not everything has to be pounded jam. But these are some of the delicacies that we enjoy so much. Yeah. And I understand them. But moderation is a big thing. And what about alcohol? I know that's a big thing in, in our culture. Not just our culture, but alcohol is something that is socially accepted everywhere. Right. You know, and some, especially men, they can drink bottles and bottles of beer, and it could be infected their inside, but they won't know. Right. And so there's been a link between excessive alcohol drinking um, and there's a certain amount that if a man drinks and a woman drinks that we would consider excessive. And generally, once you get to that point, it can cause you to start having high blood pressure. So you really have to look at those factors. Like I said in the beginning, moderation is important. And what about cigarettes? Oh, that is a, a big factor when it yeah. comes to high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. We have linked cigarettes to a host of medical conditions, one of them also being high blood pressure, but also plaque buildup, mm -hmm. which can cause your, your arteries, your vessels, to become very hard and stiff. So that in itself increases your blood pressure tremendously. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much, Linda. You're very welcome. This was a lovely talk, very educational, informative. I hope that we all got something. The heart pumps blood into the arteries by alternative contraction and relaxation. As a result, the pressure arises within the arteries known as blood pressure. The blood pressure is measured with a blood pressure cuff and is recorded as systolic and diastolic. The systolic pressure is the pressure following the contraction of the heart. The diastolic pressure is the pressure while the heart is in the relaxation phase. The normal systolic pressure is 120. The normal diastolic pressure is 80. The blood pressure is considered high when the systolic pressure is higher than 140 and the diastolic pressure above 90. The blood pressure is not constant and frequently varies depending on the posture, activities and stress. For proper evaluation of the blood pressure, several readings are needed, noted over a period of a couple of months. Although high blood pressure can be caused by a medical condition, while in most cases the underlying cause is unknown. Overweight, excessive salt intake, drinking more than two cups of alcohol per day constitute the risk of getting high blood pressure. A healthy lifestyle can be a great contribution towards prevention of high blood pressure. Abstinence from smoking prevents damage to your cardiovascular system. Have less than two alcoholic drinks per day. Take a balanced diet, avoid overeating, excessive salt and fat. Have a daily intake of fruits, vegetables and dairy products. Physical exercise, relaxation and fun prevent stress and positively affect your blood pressure. Some families are more prone to high blood pressure than others. High blood pressure itself is not a disease. However, consistently high blood pressure for many years increases the risk of heart and coronary diseases. The occurrence of cardiovascular disorders in close relatives increases your own risk of high blood pressure. Smoking and diabetes affect the cardiovascular system more than high blood pressure. You are advised to have your blood pressure checked by your general practitioner. When you are over 40 and your blood pressure has never been measured before, when immediate family members have had a cardiovascular disease, when you are experiencing heart and vascular problems, when you have already been diagnosed with high blood pressure, your general practitioner can give you more information about the disorder and possible treatment options. Welcome back. So as you know, we are discussing high blood pressure. Dr. Linda Luhebu has given us a wealth of knowledge, but there's still more to discuss. I want to ask you, Linda, how do we know that we have high blood pressure? Like, what are some symptoms that we can look out for? Well, high blood pressure can cause a lot of different complications. 
some of the symptoms of high blood pressure start with the eyes. Mm. As small as they are, they actually get the most pressure. So wow. you could end up having some changes in your vision. Maybe it be blurry, or maybe you know you don't see your vision so well at night, or even maybe you, your peripheral vision is not as well as it should be. Things like that are some signs that something may be going on. Now, does it mean that it's only high blood pressure? Maybe not. But that is one of the symptoms that we do notice with high blood pressure. Now, let's say the complication of high blood pressure is that it affected your heart. One of the symptoms that you may notice is that you get very tired or you have to stop and rest when you're walking up a flight of stairs when before that wasn't an issue. You can at some point go back and evaluate the heart and realize that you may have high blood pressure that has affected your heart. Wow. That is also another one. Mm. So let's say, you know, that you've had high blood pressure for a long time and you never knew. High blood pressure affects the brain in a lot of different ways. Mm. One way is that it can cause silent, small strokes. Oh. And you won't know. But the point of that is to say that the areas that it causes these small, silent strokes can actually cause you to have memory loss, mm. memory changes, or personality changes. So those things make a big difference when you're talking about high blood pressure. So if you see someone that's having changes in their vision, and you see someone that may be having changes in the way that they interact, or memory, or you see someone that may start having changes in the way they're active, those may be signs that there's something internally going on. And that may all stem from high blood pressure. It's not an absolute, but it's a fair warning. Mm -hmm. Even things like headaches are very common in people who have high blood pressure and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. When they have a headache and it's a pounding headache, usually people can have a headache. If it turns into a migraine, it may last a couple of days. And it's positional. Usually a headache that comes from high blood pressure doesn't matter the position, doesn't matter the duration, the time frame, but it does matter that the headache is lasting longer than what would be considered normal. Wow. And those are signs that someone could be having something internal going on. High blood pressure could be part of that. Mm. And for that, a discussion with your primary doctor is very necessary because that helps you to define what is going on. And if you can take care of high blood pressure, guess what? You take care of the other symptoms that come with it. Yeah. You take care of the, the issues with the eyes, you take care of the issues with the brain, the heart, the whole list of symptoms that come from high blood pressure, you take care of by taking care of high blood pressure. Not just taking Tylenol for a headache, Mm -hmm. But it, because taking the Tylenol is putting a Band-Aid on the real problem. That's true. Mm -hmm. So discussing and knowing that you have high blood pressure and treating it the appropriate way helps you to take care of the symptoms that can come from high blood pressure. Wow, that is really interesting. All those little, you know, because we have those little symptoms and like I would take Tylenol and just go to sleep. And Absolutely. I sometimes have had headaches for like two or three days and I don't go to the doctor. Sometimes I tell myself, you know, when I go to my doctor, before I go, I should write a list of the little things happening to me. Because, you know, sometimes when you go to the doctor, or at least for me, I'll speak for myself, I don't remember everything. Right. I might go for, maybe I have the flu, and I'm there for the flu, but I forget any little thing. And little things, you know, can mean big things. Absolutely. One thing that, a story that someone told me was that they, um, when they found out they had high blood pressure, they were urinating. And in their urine, the urine was foamy, a lot of foam, like you like you have soap in your urine. And I heard that's another sign of not high blood pressure, but something that like your organs are affected. Yes, affected. Can you explain that? Well, that's another symptom, mm -hmm. and that is to say that the high blood pressure has affected the kidneys at that point. Okay, and you can see that with other conditions, diabetes, mm -hmm. um, certain type of blood disorders, but high blood pressure can cause or affect the kidneys and cause kidney failure. Oh my. 
And when you start to see that frothiness, mm -hmm. that soap-like, mm -hmm. um, you know, foam in the in the toilet, that's called proteinuria, meaning it's your kidneys are not able to contain the protein in the body, and it is spilling it. My God, whenever you urinate, and that frothiness that you see is the protein in mm. your body. Wow. Thank you all so much for viewing the show today. And I want to give a special thanks to Dr. Linda Uhebu. No uh, thank you for all your knowledge. And I really hope you come back because I think that we have a lot more to discuss. Will you come back? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I love education and I love making sure that our community will do well. And so this is one of the main ways that we can help ourselves. Good. I hope I didn't stress you out too much. Absolutely not. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Read them. We're ready. Okay. Thank you. See you next time.